everyone. And I'm excited to be here to introduce myself and also my latest book that I'm so extraordinarily excited about. So first of all, a little bit about me. I am a licensed psychologist and also a professor at the University at Buffalo, SUNY State University of New York. And I have been researching trauma since the very beginning of my career. One of my first publications was in the area of PTSD among children and adolescents. And since then, I have been studying, living the questions, and really working with patients in their recovery from trauma. And I've been reading every single thing that I could find on the topic, studying in all various kinds of ways. Um, and this all came together in an opportunity to write a workbook for people wanting to work through their trauma in a way that they could own. Um, it's so important in trauma that we often can't control the circumstances under which the trauma occurs in our lives, but we can embrace and manage and plan and pace our recovery. And so here it is. It's the Embodied Healing Workbook, and there's the link where you can get it. This gives you the chance to really take ownership over your recovery. So I am ready for any questions that you might have. Um, I'll look for them to come up on the display. So um, can you talk more about the idea of the way out is in? Yes. Um, so many the history, so starting with the history of psychology, no, I won't go there. <laughs> um, having taught the history of psychology, I can tell you that the origins of therapy, beginning with talk therapy, and then moving toward cognitive approaches, even cognitive behavioral approaches, which get us more in our bodies. Um, and my cat is joining us here, if you hear a meowing in the background. Um, wasn't enough of really landing in your body. And what happens when you experience trauma or a potentially traumatizing event is one of the first things you lose is the connection with your own body, right? The, the, the feeling of landing in and being in your body. And so what I found is individuals who seem to move through recovery most effectively find a way back in find a way back into connecting to something as simple as their own heartbeat and breath and sense of groundedness while they work through what they've been through. So the way out of the reactive, protective states is turning inward toward yourself as a, a resource in your recovery, your own body. Let's see a next one. So what is the first step someone can take to begin their embodied healing journey? So in the workbook, um, I created a whole plan for you or your patient to walk through this process in a very protected way. So the first step is really helping your body feel safe enough to move forward. Uh, many people refer this refer to this process as moving at the speed of trust. So my recovery can't be something that traumatizes me. I need to be prepared, feel safe, feel like I have a nice container for whatever may come so that when I process, I can move forward in a way that feels well held by me and my own body, by me and my therapist, by me and my support people. So the first steps really involve getting to understand exactly what is trauma, what am I, um, what have I experienced in terms of the impact on my body, and then what are the typical reactions? So I learn about that. And then developing a self-care plan, developing a set of resources. It's a really fun process, and it can include even identifying a protector that can be there for you when uh, you're going through the process. Uh, developing an inner sanctuary, having a sense of inner resources that you can turn toward when things get rough. So the first steps of trauma recovery are actually reinforcing the skills within yourself that'll help you be strong throughout the journey. All right, let's see the next one. How can you 
How can you be with and work with your trauma memories and symptoms in a healthy way? Do I need to reprocess my process? Oh, that's a great question. So, um, so the book divides up the skills for being with and working with what shows up in your body and the trauma memories. So being with and working with uh, can just be what we do to get through the day. Uh, typically without even getting to our trauma memories. When we have had traumatizing events, our body can get a bit more reactive. If you have learned about, which it's in here to tell you, the, um, the process through the polyvagal theory, um, the potentially traumatizing events can put us into what we call, sorry, my husband just got home. Hello, Jerry. I'm on a Facebook live event for PESI. So if you guys could. <laughs> so this would be a be with work with. So I'm going to be with the fact that my husband came home from work and my dog will bark. And then if I need to, and I worked with, I reached out and I requested help for what could happen in that moment. So the be with skills are simply what can I do in this moment? Ground my feet, breathe. All right, slow my heart rate. That's the being with. And there's lots of different being with skills in the book. And then there are working with skills. And these are things that I actually do to either kind of connect to my environment in a new way, shift into new ways of thinking of things, through things, and then problem solving actively to shift my relationship with either the sensations, the physiology, the reactive states, the, the emotion memories, um, the memory narrative um, as I work through it. So do I have to reprocess is the really critical part of that question. And maybe is the answer. So for some people, it may be in your best interest to really get good at working with your body as it works through day-to-day -day functioning. And that for many people can be enough that I'm going to work with my body and how it works so hard to protect me and help it relax and calm and be with and work with what's here. And I don't need to necessarily reprocess. For other individuals, it may be in your best interest to reprocess what you've been through. And so there's the section in, near the end of the book where I can take people who would like to through the process of reprocessing their trauma. Um, and I encourage you strongly to work with a trauma therapist in that process. Um, but again, maybe would be the answer. Okay, the next one. What are some ways your body might tell you to slow down your embodied healing journey? So throughout the book, there are signals to pause. And the, the term pause, P-A-U-S-E. So the P will stand for pause. <laughs> the A is assessing. And then the U-S-E is to use your resources. So throughout this journey of healing, you're encouraged to pause and assess how you're doing. Um, you will learn how to do, I should have tabbed it. There's a really beautiful self-regulation scale that you learn how to use and you'll learn how to pair it to what your body is experiencing. I won't look for it. Um, I wish I could find it really quick. But if you buy the book, <laughs> it's right in there. Um, so you can, um, on the self-regulation scale, notice to where you are. If you're continually being in a reactive state, um, it'll, it means take time and take a pause. And then you're going to use your resources. Reach out to support networks, connect with your therapist, and taking a break from the process. Um, and there's more to that. And uh, there'll be workshops forthcoming that you can engage in learning more of the process. And of course, through the link, uh, you can purchase your copy of the book. And thank you so much for being here with my dog and my cat and my husband and me to talk about the book. I look forward to seeing you in the